This is brought to you by The Praetorian. On YouTube, Facebook, and Anchor Podcast. A finite subdivision rule is a recursive way of dividing a polygon or other two-dimensional shape into smaller and smaller pieces. Subdivision rules in a sense are generalizations of regular geometric fractals. Instead of repeating the same design over and over, they have slight variations in each stage, allowing a richer structure while maintaining the elegant style of fractals. Subdivision rules have been used in architecture, biology, and computer science, as well as in the study of hyperbolic manifolds. Substitution tilings are a well-studied type of subdivision rule. Definition A subdivision rule takes a tiling of the plane by polygons and turns it into a new tiling by subdividing each polygon into smaller polygons. It is finite if there are only finitely many ways that every polygon can subdivide. Each way of subdividing a tile is called a tile type. Each tile type is represented by a label, usually a letter. Every tile type subdivides into smaller tile types. Each edge also gets subdivided according to finitely many edge types. Finite subdivision rules can only subdivide tilings that are made up of polygons labeled by tile types. Such tilings are called subdivision complexes for the subdivision rule. Given any subdivision complex for a subdivision rule, we can subdivide it over and over again to get a sequence of tilings. For instance, the binary subdivision has one tile type and one edge type. Since the only tile type is a quadrilateral, the binary subdivision can only subdivide tilings made up of quadrilaterals. This means that the only subdivision complexes are tilings by quadrilaterals. The tiling can be regular, but doesn't have to be. All quadrilaterals are type A tiles. Examples of finite subdivision rules the barycentric subdivision is an example of a subdivision rule with one edge type that gets subdivided into two edges and one tile type, a triangle that gets subdivided into six smaller triangles. Any triangulated surface is a barycentric subdivision complex. The Penrose tiling can be generated by a subdivision rule on a set of four tile types. Certain rational maps give rise to finite subdivision rules. This includes most Lattes maps. Every prime, non-split alternating knot or link complement has a subdivision rule, with some tiles that do not subdivide, corresponding to the boundary of the link complement. The subdivision rules show what the night sky would look like to someone living in a knot complement because the universe wraps around itself, i.e. is not simply connected, an observer would see the visible universe repeat itself in an infinite pattern. The subdivision rule describes that pattern. The subdivision rule looks different for different geometries. In each case, the subdivision rule would act on some tiling of a sphere, i.e. the night sky but it is easier to just draw a small part of the night sky, corresponding to a single tile being repeatedly subdivided. Subdivision rules in higher dimensions. Subdivision rules can easily be generalized to other dimensions. For instance, the barycentric subdivision is used in all dimensions. Also, the binary subdivision can be generalized to other dimensions, where hypercubes get divided by every midplane, as in the proof of the Heine Borel theorem. Rigorous definition A finite subdivision rule consists of the following 
1. A finite two-dimensional CW complex, called the subdivision complex, with a fixed cell structure such that the union of its closed two cells. We assume that for each closed two cell there is a CW structure on a closed two disc that has at least two vertices, the vertices, edges, and the characteristic map which maps, restricts to a homeomorphism onto each open cell. 2. A finite two-dimensional CW complex, which is a subdivision. 3. A continuous cellular map called the subdivision map, whose restriction to every open cell is a homeomorphism onto an open cell. Each CW complex in the definition above is called a tile type. A complex for a subdivision rule is a two-dimensional CW complex, which is the union of its closed two cells, together with a continuous cellular map whose restriction to each open cell is a homeomorphism. We can subdivide a complex by requiring that the induced map restricts to a homeomorphism onto each open cell. By repeating this process, we obtain a sequence of subdivided complexes with maps. The binary subdivision is one example. The subdivision complex can be created by gluing together the opposite edges of the square, making the subdivision complex into a torus. The subdivision map is the doubling map on the torus, wrapping the meridian around itself twice, and the longitude around itself twice. This is a fourfold covering map. The plane, tiled by division, each square in the plane gets subdivided into squares of one-fourth the size. Quasi-isometry properties, subdivision rules. Given a subdivision rule and subdivision complex, we can construct a graph called the history graph that record the action of the subdivision rule. The graph consists of the dual graphs of every stage, together with edges connecting each tile with its subdivisions. The quasi-isometry properties of the history graph can be studied using subdivision rules. For instance, the history graph is quasi-isometric to hyperbolic space exactly when the subdivision rule is conformal, as described in the combinatorial Riemann mapping theorem. Applications Islamic gira tiles in Islamic architecture are self-similar tilings that can be modeled with finite subdivision rules. In 2007, Peter J. Liu of Harvard University and Professor Paul J. Steinhardt of Princeton University published a paper in the journal Science suggesting that Gira tilings possessed properties consistent with self-similar fractal quasicrystalline tilings such as Penrose tilings, presentation 1974, predecessor works starting in about 1964, predating them by five centuries. Subdivision surfaces in computer graphics use subdivision rules to refine a surface to any given level of precision. These subdivision surfaces, such as the Catmull-Clark subdivision surface, take a polygon mesh, the kind used in 3D animated movies, and refines it to a mesh with more polygons by adding and shifting points according to different recursive formulas. Although many points get shifted in this process, each new mesh is combinatorially a subdivision of the old mesh, meaning that for every edge and vertex of the old mesh, you can identify a corresponding edge and vertex in the new one, plus several more edges and, ver and vertices. Subdivision rules were applied by Cannon, Floyd, and Perry, 2000 to the study of large-scale growth patterns of biological organisms. Cannon, Floyd, and Perry produced a mathematical growth model, which demonstrated that some systems determined by simple finite subdivision rules can result in objects, in their example, a tree trunk, whose large-scale form oscillates wildly over time even though the local subdivision laws remain the same. 
Cannon, Floyd, and Perry also applied their model to the analysis of the growth patterns of rat tissue. They suggested that the negatively curved, or non-Euclidean, nature of microscopic growth patterns of biological organisms is one of the key reasons why large-scale organisms do not look like crystals or polyhedral shapes, but in fact, in many cases resemble self-similar fractals. In particular, they suggested that such a negatively curved local structure is manifested in the highly folded and highly connected nature of the brain and the lung tissue. Cannon's Conjecture Cannon, Floyd, and Perry first studied finite subdivision rules in an attempt to prove the following conjecture. Cannon's Conjecture Every Gromov hyperbolic group with a two-sphere at infinity acts geometrically on hyperbolic three-space. Here, a geometric action is a co-compact, properly discontinuous action by isometries. This conjecture was partially solved by Grigory Perelman in his proof of the geometrization conjecture, which states, in part, that any Gromov hyperbolic group that is a three-manifold group must act geometrically on hyperbolic three-space. However, it remains to show that a Gromov hyperbolic group with a two-sphere at infinity is a three-manifold group. Cannon and Swenson showed that a hyperbolic group with a two-sphere at infinity has an associated subdivision rule. If this subdivision rule is conformal in a certain sense, the group will be a three-manifold group with the geometry of hyperbolic three-space. Combinatorial Riemann Mapping Theorem Subdivision rules give a sequence of tilings of a surface, and tilings give an idea of distance, length, and area, by letting each tile have length and area 1. In the limit, the distances that come from these tilings may converge in some sense to an analytic structure on the surface. The Combinatorial Riemann Mapping Theorem gives necessary and sufficient conditions for this to occur. Its statement needs some background. The classical modulus of a ring is defined by the use of weight functions. Statement of Theorem If a sequence of tilings of a surface is conformal, then there is a conformal structure on the surface, and a constant depending only on the classical moduli and approximate moduli of any given annulus are comparable, meaning that they lie in a single interval. Consequences The combinatorial Riemann mapping theorem implies that a group acts geometrically. If and only if it is Gromov hyperbolic, it has a sphere at infinity and the natural subdivision rule on the sphere gives rise to a sequence of tilings that is conformal. Thus, Cannon's conjecture would be true if all such subdivision rules were conformal. This is brought to you by The Praetorian, on both YouTube and Facebook. We thank you for your participation. If you enjoyed, please like, subscribe, share, make comments. We love feedback.